All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> oh, I see our friends uh, down at On Point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep admitting some people in here. All right, great. And I want to welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm Carla Antonelli. I'm the Director of Marketing here at On Point. And uh, with me, fresh back from sunny Mexico, is my co host, David Prentice. He's our Senior VP of Sales and Marketing here um, at On Point. So we're so excited you guys are with us today. Um, the point of this is for us to tell you a little bit about what we do at On Point, um, talk about our guests today from Music City Fashion Design, so you can learn a little more about what they do and how they might be able to help you with your business. And we want this to be interactive. So you, you are all muted right now. Um, I'll unmute everybody when we get to the Q&A portion and then you are welcome to ask questions. Um, you can also type questions in the chat box and we'll kind of run through um, those first, but we want this to be interactive. So we hope at some point you'll turn your cameras on and <laughs> we can see you and um, talk with you. We are recording um, this Zoom, this meeting today. So we'll send this out to you afterwards so you have it um, to reference when we're done. Um, one thing I wanted to tell you all about before we jump into um, today's discussion is we made an announcement yesterday through our sister company. Uh, it's called Eloise.Fashion. Um, Eloise is a uh, all-in-one platform that's really meant to be a digital marketplace for the global fashion industry. So it's a new, like I said, it's, it's a new platform that's really meant to be an all-in-one place for designers and brands to be able to go and create and um, manufacture and sell and ship their garments all through one platform. So our IT department has been working super hard to get this platform ready to launch on November the 17th. You can go to the website now. The URL is eloise.fashion. We'd love it if you would subscribe to our mailing list and we will uh, give you updates on those launch plans. Um, it would also be great if you followed us on our socials. If you all have started social channels from scratch, you know how challenging that can be. So uh, if you could give us a follow, we are at Eloise Fashion Design on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So thank you all for that. Um, mark your calendars too. Our next on Point Live is scheduled for Wednesday, November 18th. So we'll send out more information about our guest and time and all that good stuff, but mark your calendars for that. So that's all my housekeeping. I'm gonna turn it over to David so we can get started. All right, great intro. Can you hear me good? Yep. You got me? All right, loud and clear. Well, yeah, thank everybody for joining again. Uh, the the, the Eloise.Fashion, a, a very high up in a large company in this industry said it's it's the biggest game change that's happened in 50 years to the industry. So follow us and see what we're doing there. It's part of the uh, issue is uh, in the industry is the, the barriers to get in. And this is going to help, I think, um, uh, get some of those a little bit lower and lower and lower uh, for people to come into the industry. So um, on point manufacturing, we're the only guys in the world doing on one demand, one off clothing manufacturing, fashion on demand, FOD. That's my new buzzword for it. Um, we were the books are we're always print on demand, so we're going to say fashion on demand here. Uh, headquartered in Nashville and manufacturing plants down in Florence, Alabama. Um, probably 80% of what we do is ladies, uh, women's fashion, women's wear, and then the balance of 20 goes outer uh, wear versus men's. So a little bit of everything that's going on through there. And um, one of the things that um, that we get um, questions about people wanting to start, and literally the call right before this was a guy who's got. Uh, this new development. He's just put the first piece together. There's no pattern. There's no tech pack and there's nothing that I can do with it till I have those requirements. So um, whether you're the you know biggest brick and mortar in the world or Susie, the designer who has a sketch with her first piece that she wants to bring to life and fulfill a dream, it needs to go through some processes before it reaches a manufacturer, which I kind of fr call the front end of it. It needs someone to uh, take your idea and, and bring it to fruition, i.e. in the in the form of digitized graded patterns and a tech pack to give to us or whatever manufacturer. And then we're ready to start making it uh, in our model. Our whole philosophy is get it set up, get it orderable. And then for our client to sell one, we'll make one, we'll ship one and then repeat and do that as often as you can. Um, the big model, big picture view for us was sustainability in this model. 
Um, there's a dump truck of textiles every second around the world that is either landfilled or burned. Uh, we're trying to help that. Minimums have really hurt the industry because you have to make so many of something and you wind up not selling that. The typical dress sits on a shelf for 135 days uh, before it's sold. And that's, that's pre-COVID numbers. So don't know what's going to be happening with that now. So uh, it's got to be worse. But anyway, what we look for when I get that call from that new brand new designer, they're wanting some resources. And one of the resources that I happily hand out uh, is actually here in, uh, in the Guitar Town in Nashville. Uh, Music City Fashion Design. Ryan and Lori Paradis are our guests today. And um, Lori, uh, they're bringing over a decade of fashion experience to the table for you when you're looking to take that project from whether you've got paper patterns or just a sketch and get it into a form that myself or any manufacturer could, uh, could work with. So um, Music City Fashion Design will have their contact up here. Uh, you can give them a call, shoot them a, uh, an email, um, or if you get Ron's personal number, you can text him back and forth like we always do. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm a score high on that or he does that with everybody, but we'll find out right here. So guys, welcome to uh, Live with Carla and David today. We're glad to have you guys on board. Good to be here. This is exciting. We're, we've been pumped. We've been waiting for this uh, this day and it's it's going to be fun. So um, Lori's, the, the background of these guys is literally New York, where everybody thinks fashion. They think New York, LA, Milan, Italy, whatever. But um, these guys have got a, a little bundle of joy that is, uh, how, how old is, uh, is, is he now? He's at 22 months now. 22 months. So they thought that boy, it'd be a lot more fun to raise him to see uh, green grass, white fence and cows than yellow taxi cabs. So they have uh, moved to Nashville with their, uh, their background and their knowledge and, and Music City Fashion Design was, was born. So um, t tell us, I uh, just kind of want to start and, and y'all can hop in on anything else here. And I encourage everyone to throw questions out to Carla to, to get asked in. But when someone comes to us and they've got that sketch or they've got just an idea or they've cut and sewn a few and they got paper patterns, this is where I send them um, to, to get that next step done, to get it in a format that we can work with, because we don't do, and a lot of manufacturers, in fact, most don't do that front end development. So um, this is, this is kind of where it goes. Is there a primary area that you guys focus on? I know we're probably 80% women's wear, um, that, or do you see it all across the board, a little bit of everything? Yeah, we, we have worked kind of across the board. So Lori's uh, definitely seen a lot of women's wear, as, as you know. Um, you know, that takes up a large portion of it, but we've also worked in, in menswear and children's wear. Um, Lori's helped design with Ralph Lauren for menswear collection there. Um, we've, we, I think, what are some other areas that you've kind of come across? Um, some like hunting gear. Oh yeah. Even some, some, we have a hunting. <laughs> well, uh, I need to know more about that one, guys. Come on now. You're holding out on me. You're speaking David's language now. <laughs> <laughs> We, so we've seen a wide variance of different designs that have come uh, to us to, to get that help from, from the, that starting point of a design and all the way through patterns and tech packs. So there's, there's a lot out there that people are looking to design. Awesome. So, so let's just kind of start, you know, what, what you're in New York doing all this and you, you pick Nashville. Why Nashville? And, and what, was, what kind of made you come here to Music City? That's a great question. Um, we, so I grew up actually near Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, Lori's originally from Kansas. Um, somewhere in there we met uh, <laughs> and we ended up in New York, long story. But bottom line, we wanted to come back, back to a culture that we feel um, is a little bit more welcoming, um, a little bit slower paced as well, but we enjoy that. Um, New York was, was a rush for sure. Uh, it definitely, kept us on our toes, um, but it's good to be back in kind of the heartland of America and, and bringing some fashion uh, focus here as well and pulling it from those, those uh, other hubs like New York and, and LA maybe. Um, so that was the main pull. And then as you mentioned, our son, uh, he's 22 months old and uh, both sets of parents are within uh, eight hours of Nashville. Grandparents. So <laughs> our parents his grandparents yeah his grandparents that's what i was saying grandparents that's the coolest yeah so that kind of played a major impact on uh, where exactly we landed as well 
Gotcha. Gotcha. So what do you see when, uh, and I know I, I literally give your name out every week, sometimes multiple times a week. When you get that inquiry, what do you typically see from the, the person that's reaching out to you? Where, where are they uh, in the development stage normally or on average? Uh, so they're usually at the very beginning, they might have a sketch, they might not. Um, usually I get like a rough sketch or they reference something that, you know, a detail that they like, uh, an image that they like, an emotion, um, and they kind of want me to sketch into it as well. So, um, but it's usually at that very, very beginning point. So you'll actually help them develop the sketch, not just an idea. I mean, literally from the very beginning of the inception. Yeah, we can go all the way back uh, as far as just white space research and mood boards. We can even start there if somebody is still struggling with that concept and that vision. So we okay. can go that far back. So so let's talk grading for a minute on, on the patterns. And I think one of the, there's so many awesome things I think about what we do at On Point, just doing one piece at a time and not making it till it's so... One of the things is the is is the the sizing range that you can offer now. You no longer have to go four to fourteen. You can go double zero to twenty eight if you want to. Are, are you have you seeing a trend in in the size range increasing with clients you're working with that they're bringing out? Absolutely. Um, I work with a lot of plus size clients, um, and I have a background in plus size clothing and grading, so um, it's a really good fit. And yeah, yeah, there's been a lot of it lately. That's, it's so good. Every fashion show we hear, you know, and there's been a couple that had plus size models speak and it's like, guys, we, we're, you know, we're dying for that great product. Can you, can you bring it out? Boy, that's, that's a key, key point. You had mentioned that before and I forgot about it. Y'all have experience in grading plus size. And I, I think if from based on what I've been told, once you get in that 14, 16 or that two, three XL, it's not a scale anymore. It's a total different algorithm to go on up. Is right? Can you share anything on that? Uh, correct. Yeah. And I, um, so I look at each size individually as well. I use a 3D program called uh, Clo. So I'll actually pull up, you know, like I have models in all sizes pulled up um, and I see how the garment's fitting and I adjust the grade. Um, and I, you know, I, I, you can't just do like a straight grade from zero to 24. Um, I break it up and make sure that it's working perfectly for each size range um, so that you get a great fit across the board. Yeah, and that, that's cool. Someone that has the experience of having done that before, um, just because it's a different ball game once you get to that, to that certain level. Uh, that you can get it up there with. I love to, love to see that. Do y'all get involved in any notions, fabric sourcing or anything like that? Or are you really looking to do, do, the, do the patterning, digitization, tech pack, and then hand to the manufacturer back to the client? We do uh, some of that. And, and that's, um, I'm glad you touched on sourcing because uh, I, I did want to bring that up at some point. We do find that might be one of the bigger hurdles that a lot of people run into. Um, sourcing is an interesting beast in itself because you would think starting from scratch, it's a simple Google search for what you're looking for and boom, there we go. And you can get exactly <laughs> what you need and the exact amounts. Um, Amazon, but right? Amazon, yeah, <laughs> just, just, just go to Amazon. You can order it, uh, two day shipping. Um, but that's, that's not exactly the case. Uh, so we do handle a lot of that for um, new clients. Um, and we've got a little visitor here. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> furrier, furrier than I was expecting to come by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, we do handle that for some people. Um, and, and there's a lot more behind the scenes that's involved with sourcing. And that's one thing I just, I guess I want to stress okay. it, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, so we, we do handle it. it. It is a little bit bigger of a hurdle than some people may realize if they're not used to it. Yeah. And, and, and the more knowledge you can get on that, you're hundred percent right. The better, and the more outlets you can get on that, even, even the better sometimes, you know, one of the, uh, another great thing about on demand is, you know, we don't need 500 yards of fabric. It takes, you know, two yards to make a dress. So there's so much dead stock out there in the world that has been kicked to the curb because it doesn't meet the traditional manufacturer minimums. I need two yards, you know. Uh, we've had some brands that have just done phenomenal finding this, you know, great fabric out there and, and giving it a second life instead of being in that dump truck being burnt that day. 
uh, just a huge, huge deal. Tara St. James and I can get anyone her contact in New York, kind of jokingly refer to her as the, the queen of dead stock. She's big on recycled fabrics. Uh, she worked with Incubator there in Brooklyn for, for years and um, just a lot of recycled product and, and the dead stock and trying to, you know, let's try to re, you know, reuse some of this stuff or bring it back into circulation. That's, that's fantastic. What's the, 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 the typical customer, and I, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I, I will tell you that um, at, at least once a week, if not every day, I get a question talking with new brand or client because one-off manufacturing is different. Um, uh, and, and the question is, well, just how, how, much, how much is a dress? And, and, and my response is, well, how much is a house? You know, I mean, you kind of ask me, is it in Malibu? Is it in Bismarck, North Dakota? Where's the house? How big is it? How many bedrooms? There's just so many variables to it. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I can go, kind of go, I, I see our dresses running, I mean, on average from like 35 to $45 a piece, we go from the twenties on up depending on the product, but it's, you know, it's, it's not any different than a house or a car. It depends on, you know, what you're looking for. But I do think some brand new designers, some brand new brands there, there's not a, um, maybe fashion decks has a book on it, but there's not a book that goes, it's going to cost you X, Y, Z to, to get from here to here, to here, to here. So it does cost money and not to put you on the spot for pricing, but what does a new, what does a new brand, if I've got, I've got a dress I want to launch, what, what am I looking at to get it from my idea to a manufacturer? Am I talking, you know, is that a hundred dollar bill or is that $10,000 to do that? Yeah, that's a, that is a good question. And also a tough question, as you alluded to, it's a little, yeah. because what you're trying to do with fashion design and development is, <laughs> is incorporate someone's vision and their ideas into something tangible. And depending on how complex those ideas may be, it, would, it could involve a lot more energy and time um, and, and expense. Um, so it's difficult to give an average or even a range um, overall. But what we do try to do is we, we try to give, if somebody has concept uh, that they want to look at moving forward with, you know, and they'll reach out to us. We'll talk through that with them on the first call. The initial call, um, we'll, we'll ask the questions we need to ask to get a good estimate. Um, and it also depends on how many designs they're looking at as well. So it's not just a one-off sometimes. Um, but once we, we have an initial call with somebody, typically we'll be able to send out what we like to call an a la carte um, estimate. So we can essentially provide an estimate depending on what you're trying to design on every single step of the development process. Um, so it's not so much, here's your single price for everything go. It's, it's a little bit more uh, intuitive than that and, and complex, but we do try to keep that simple to, to the point where once you've had that initial call, here's essentially your menu moving forward line process. And you so, can- So the call, I guess, d d is there a charge for a consultation or them to reach out to show you something, what they're trying to do or- Not at all, no. We, we yeah. definitely keep that barrier as low as possible. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're happy to field calls and, and emails from people that are at least just interested um, and getting some more information from us. Um, and then from there, we try to schedule a consultation. Typically, they're about half an hour. Um, and, and we can kind of go through and through that conversation, figure out exactly what they're looking for, where their needs are, and explain to them the process of how the development may look. And then at the end of that call, get an estimate out to them of what that might look like. And, and to kind of give you a little bit more of a concrete uh, example or numbers um, for for something that is a little bit more on the simpler side. Um, there's there's a few stages of development, of course, but let's narrow in on on the tech pack, which is probably the meat and potatoes of the design and development process. Um, so for something that's a little bit more on the simpler side, you're talking probably between three and four hundred dollars. Um, and, and that can go up to probably around $800, depending on how complex it gets. Or, or I'm going to say three or 4,000, depending on how many options and how many things and what all they want to include. And, you know, I want to take this um, and it, I don't want a V-neck. I want the dress in a V-neck, a scoop neck, a boat neck, a round neck, sleeveless, short sleeve. Suddenly 
that one, you know, that one skew. And again, that's part of our model where you can do that, but it, it, it's still development time on there. So yeah, it could just, yeah, it, it, you, you, can, you can spend a few hundred or a few thousand dollars getting yeah. that product uh, or your idea or that napkin sketch uh, and get it to, to market. And, and we initially discussed, was that something we wanted to do when we were building this? And thank God there's people like you because we quickly realized, no, we don't. Uh, we want to manufacture. That's what we do best. And that's what we want to do. Because uh, it can take, it can take, two weeks, two months, two years from the time an initial conversation until, you know, if the designer gets picky and wants to keep doing it, it can drag out, you know, what's your longest client you've had from start to finish? You don't, don't call any names. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Uh, <laughs> you've got one you worked on for over a year, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but they were changing, you know, there's lots of like changes. Like you were alluding to, there's changes yeah. throughout that development process that can tack on um for that process so yeah there is one that, that went over a year and, and changes aren't free that's time and that's just kind of where i was wanting to go with this because i know for a fact that the people that i've had initial conversations with i've not heard from for a year and it's like all right ready to go got everything done i'm like holy cow where'd you been for a year well we were i changed a few things along the way and, and you know it, it, it all adds up. So, the, you know, the point being, you know, try to have your ducks in as best row you can for what you want to do in your vision when you start the conversations with guys like uh, Music City Fashion Design, where you know kind of where you're going to go. And if you do change horses in the middle of the stream, no, it's going to cost you every time you do something like that going forward. Uh, and I love that you guys spell it out up front. You get to see it. Um, you see the pricing. We do that too. Once we get that tech pack and pattern or, or, or close facsimile of from y'all, we can tell a client, this is, here's black and white, this is your cost moving forward, what it looks like. So they kind of know where they're, um, where they're gonna plan uh, to move forward. What's the, what's the craziest thing you, you've done design-wise? Um, it's a PG rated show, just heads up. <laughs> so I've done a lot of lingerie. Yeah, just FYI, <laughs> that's actually. <laughs> Um, um, that's a good question. Maybe. I mean, you know, uh, so, okay. One of the craziest things I've ever developed and designed was a seamless garment that had color going diagonally through the whole thing. Um, and that was my own fault because I designed it and produced it. It was for Tommy <laughs> Hilfinger, but, um, that's one of the craziest things I think I've ever so what are the challenges to that? Like, what, why would that be? A... Oh, just because it's, you know, you're doing a circular knitting um, mm -hmm. and to do a diagonal design was just... Cutting tubular diagonal while standing on your head. I bet the manufacturer would love to see that one. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting on the lingerie. Um, you know, there, there's... In the development side, obviously the, the plus size and great enough, that's huge. Know somebody, you know, use somebody that has that experience because it ain't black and white when you go from a 14 to a 24. Um, lingerie and manufacturing, it's kind of its own gig. If you do, you do lingerie or you don't do, we don't do lingerie. Uh, you do lingerie, you can probably do swimwear. Um, we don't do swimwear. So, you know, the other thing is maybe, you know, I hope I'm the right manufacturer, but but you know, there's there's different length nails and sizes of hammers. You know, there's it takes something, you know, different things to build different things. So, you know, make sure your manufacturer can do what you want done uh, and 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 make sure they're legit with that decision with you. And then make sure that your guys that are developing the product can develop that product. You know, you if you if you've got a line of lingerie, you want somebody that's been doing lingerie before. Uh, to kind of make it smoother and, and keep that cost down, which was funny. Carla, we, Carla and I did a talk, booked me on a talk for uh, the, um, say, say the name of the thing, Carla, see if you don't laugh. Can't not laugh. It's yeah. called lingerie briefs. <laughs> it, it's a great name, but she laughs and smiles every time we say it. Um, but it was uh, just, you know, talking about manufacturing that, you know, that's going on out there. And, and, we, and it was a unique thing because we don't do lingerie. But what you've seen happen with a lot of these guys is they're doing athleisure wear and that will fit what we do. So, um, you know, different brands may have different levels of manufacturing that they're that they're working with. Um, you got any, any questions rolling in, Carla, that you want to throw at these guys? 
I, I haven't seen any at the chat. Um, does anyone have any questions they want to throw out there? Daniela, you've got one. I can unmute you. Hi, you guys. Hi. You guys are so cute. Nice to meet you. I'm Daniela Platt. Um, I'm a brand strategist for the fashion industry. I also coach people on how to be a sales rock star. Um, in fact, I just wrote a book on it and it's fun because On Point was quoted. Um, so what I do is, um, so, and I have a lot of friends now kind of in your area. It's been kind of fun. Oh, nice. <laughs> I feel like and I had a Daniela visit. was our September On Point Live guest <laughs> as well. <laughs> I, yeah, um, and we, and David and I have just been on some fun panels. So it's crazy that I wrote a book. So I like to show it fashion startup playbook. Um, so I work with a lot of, I work with a lot of like entrepreneurs who are not in the fashion space necessarily, but they want to add fashion as an additional revenue stream to their line. And they don't know about design. And I sort of promised them that I could get you going in 90 days. I know that that's not realistic for like a full complete line. We could do it for blanks. We could do some for private label, but what, what could you offer that could be like, they could look at and say, yeah, we could roll into production into like this three month window. Um, and, and, and with that, I, I call it above the keyboard looks like, you know, have you, have you, my second part is like, have you seen any, have you seen any trends like above the keyboard sort of percolating that are kind of interesting that you could share? Um, that's a good question. Yeah. So to answer about like the, you know, getting started, like a, a quick start, um, we actually use, like I, I mentioned before, the 3D technology um, for fittings and that reduces the timeline significantly. That's true. So there's a lot that we could probably actually get out in less than three months, um, purely because we're, you know, normally with the development timeline, you're getting a sample from, you know, you could, you make something, you design it, you get a sample, you put it on body, um, and then you make changes and you repeat, kind of rinse and repeat, you know, multiple times. Whereas we put it on body before we even make a sample. Virtually, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so cool, yeah. Um, and visually, I get on Zoom with my clients too, and they can kind of tweak like, oh, maybe I want that hemline raised a little bit. You know what? I think I want that sleeve a little fuller. And we can kind of visually talk through all of that. Um, and that speeds things up significantly. Um, so huge. So essentially you're taking a traditional model that's a minimum, typically like six months. That's talking if you have a manufacturer that can pick out samples quickly. Um, and yeah, you can truncate that a little bit down to almost 90 days, maybe 91, but yeah, I think it's possible. Depending do you have, um, do you have like any models of do you have like starter pieces that people kind of work, can work off of? Not so much, not so much private label, but like ideas of concepts that people can kind of tweak and make their own. Uh, we don't right now, currently. Like um, blocks, kind of. Is that what you mean? Would that be the word? Yeah, yeah. She's going down that road. Yeah, y'all are still pretty kind of the independent. Some people have. Uh, there, there's some blocks that have been built during all this COVID where you've seen some folks come out and build like templates for hoodies. That's just kind of a standard basic thing. Yeah. That, that, yeah, they could go in and pick in. But you guys throw a hoodie together in five days anyway. So it's, it's, it's good. Right? Yeah. I asked you who the longest, what's the quickest? What's the quickest someone's come to you and said, I've got this. How soon can you hand it off? Yeah, we just finished one. Um, it was a week and a half. Whoa. It, was, it was a simple design. <laughs> and it was I like that. Let me preface this, right? Let me be clear. <laughs> it was simple and it was one. <laughs> but it's possible. <laughs> wow. That's that is cool. That is cool. Who else? Anybody else got some questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> what um What's a piece or two of advice that, that you would have for a new brand or new label starting up that you've seen maybe pitfalls in the past that could be avoided? Um, I think it's just um, you kind of have to know what you want. I was going to say, make, make sure you have it clear. That's honestly the main, yeah. you know, if you are, if your head's going in 10 different directions, um, and it's not all necessarily molding well together. 
um, that can lead to a lot of like redesign and a lot of long timelines and um, it's not good for anybody really. So I think it's more just to have a solid vision of what you want, really think it through, um, make sure that you're in love with it. Yeah. Gotcha. Claire, did you have a question? Yes, I do, but I'm not sure if anyone can hear me. Hey, Claire, yeah. we can hear you. Yeah, oh, you can hear me. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All right, let me see if I can just get my, uh, figure out how to do the screen thing. Sorry, I'm on a, uh, a phone and it's, a little harder to navigate than a desktop. That's okay. Where are you calling? Um, where, where are you tuning in from, Claire? I'm in Austin, Texas. All right, hook them horns. <laughs> yes. And uh, actually, David, I'm quite familiar with uh, with with you guys. I, I met you at um, LA Textiles back before everything shut down, and I saw you speak at this latest one as well. I love what you're doing. Um, I had a question regarding um, batch cutting. If you know, if everything is sort of made to order, how, how does the cutting process look like? And, and what kind of cost does that add? Because I imagine, you know, things are being hand cut to order or, or what does that process look like? Uh, uh, great question. We, we don't do anything hand. It, everything is completely autom automated in the plant. And if you go to YouTube, you'll see some beautiful videos up there of the interior of our plant if you just type in home point manufacturing. So, um, what, you've got that. You've got a blue dress. We've got your blue fabric. You sell it. You drop the order in your portal. Um, we're gonna probably hold that order for maybe 12 hours to see if there's another blue dress behind it. And if there's not, it's gonna drop. It's gonna route to the cutter. Uh, the material handler is gonna pull up on the screen what to get next. He's gonna load, pull it out of the bin, roll it over, uh, get ready to load it with the cutter operator onto the the, the Gerber cutter. And then we're going to build our own marker for that blue dress. And then we're, that, way, that, way, that way we can nest the pieces very, very tightly together. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all digital. It's all digitized. And once we get that, then they hit the cut button. It starts to cut. And she starts to it to the coat uh, for, for manufacturing. And it hits the conveyor after that. The fabric is then rolled back up, rolled back over, and put back in your bin till the next blue dress order comes through. And then we'll roll it back out and do the same thing. And again, we're going to build our own markers so I can nest that now in this left front center of the fabric where we've already cut a piece off of. So right. it, it's all about um, sustainability and eliminating the waste. So literally, I, I get questions, I mean, every week or two, hey, can you make scrunchies out of the leftover? Um, I don't know what a scrunchie is. Um, <laughs> um, but there, there's, no, there's no leftover. I mean, it's literally just it's like strings of spaghetti and confetti uh, in a bag when we're recycling there. So it, it is con all about conserving it. And, and we cut yeah. single ply because we just do one at a time. Wow. Cool, very cool, thank you. Lori and Ryan, um, would you like to put your contact information in the chat box so everyone knows how to get a hold of you? I'm present, it's right there. Any anyone else have any questions? Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Well, that was a thorough one and a good one, guys. You got their contact right on there, and uh, we'll post this up on all of our social stuff so you can track them there too as well. And uh, join us next time for a mystery guest because we don't know who it is yet. Uh, <laughs> November eighteenth. <laughs> And our contact information is at the top of the chat. If you, um, David's cell phone and email is at the top of the chat string. Lori and Ryan, thank you so much for agreeing to participate in this. You have such a wealth of knowledge that is so valuable out there for these brands and, and, and new designers that are coming out that um, you can't find anywhere. And it, it's good knowledge. It's true knowledge. And I just always, I'm always confident when I, when I had sent somebody your way that, um, that we're going to get what we need and they're going to wind up being in good hands and, and trust is a big thing in any business relationship or personal relationship or anything. So I love what you guys are doing and I love the fact that um, you let us uh, use your name out there in the industry to, uh, to offer these resources to all the people out there that really, really need it. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us on and it's been a blast connecting with you and being a part of that. So happy to help. We've got, one, we've got one quick question that came in from uh, Daniela. Daniela, is this uh, towards um, Lori and Ryan or what we do at On Point? The question is, what's Lori the and Ryan. 
what's the minimum to get started? That's the question. Oh, well, you could do one piece, one yeah. type pack. You could do just one, like on point. Um, just one. Like on. It could be one sketch. It could be a complete development from sketch, tech pack, and pattern and grading. So it's um, we're all a cart. So it's whatever service you need from us, we're available. Okay. I love the a la carte feature that you mentioned when we kicked that off. I wasn't aware of that. That's really cool. I want to do some of this and some of that. That's a big piece to, to our philosophy, I guess, just to wrap that up. Because again, we, we have tried to put our, our into the, the headspace of a small business owner or, or someone just getting started. And, and it's a lot to take in all at once. So we try to keep that barrier as small as we can. I have a that. question. How about it, yeah. brother? So I just want to be clear. So what music fashion design does, do you actually do sampling? Once you do the patterns, do you make the sample, the first samples? Yeah, so we work with a lot of local uh, seamstresses here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Create the actual sample. Yeah, so we liaise on that for, mm -hmm. for clients. And for same sure. for uh, fit models as well. We can mm -hmm. do fit and yeah. Okay, good. Everything from start through what on point needs we can handle. Yeah, because yeah, I mean I'm I'm pretty sure most people will need a sample for photography, for you know, lookbooks and things like that. So they may take one or two samples that's needed, you know. Sure. And Michael, even for the manufacturer, for us to look at one, we, we produce samples, but I'd rather not. I'm not a we're not a sample yeah. house, you know, where you go and go, hey, I need 10 of mm -hmm. these. That's not our gig. So my, my the perfect world for us is we get that digitized graded pattern. We get that compliant tech pack. I got that sample. We have everything we could ever think we could need to right. get it protected for our customer. So right. yeah, they, they can do that. That's a good point. Great question. Cool. Well, we wrap that one up. Probably we need some, we need coffee mugs and a sign off. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Coming next, November. Good deal. We'll see you. Uh, Thanks, guys, so much. And, uh, Thanks thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, guys. All right, Thanks then. for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.